and welcome to Fluid Life's Interpreting Fluid Analysis Data for Compressor Components. My name is Drew McRae and I am the Reliability Solutions and Training Manager here at Fluid Life. I have about 10 years experience in the reliability engineering field for plant-based equipment. So today we're going to cover the common failure mechanisms for plant-based and oil and gas-based reciprocating and rotary screw compressors. So as you guys know, there are many different types of compressors, but today we're only going to be focusing rotary and reciprocating compressors. As with the many types of compressors, there are many different types of oils. Today we're going to primarily be focusing on mineral oil, but if there's any questions you guys have on the more synthetic types of oils, please feel free to reach out to me. So you're gonna have some different types of uh, failure modes when it comes to compressor lubricants. You're gonna have your oil degradation, loss of viscosity, oil and gas solubility, oil mixture compatibility issues, corrosion issues, and contamination issues. So Fluid Life is here to help you interpret your oil analysis results with the data that is provided to us. We can help lead you down a path to decide what's going to be the best course of action for your pieces of equipment. With that being said, we take the oil analysis results and help you decide if it's best to keep going with the situation the component is in, should we resample, should we be starting to consider an equipment rebuild, anything like that. So you see on the left side, this is our standard test. And this is what you're mostly going to get when you do um, any sort of test with us. You're going to get your viscosity, your viscosity index, ICP, percent water, particle count, and acid number. And on the right are the value-added tests that we provide. If you have any interest in any of these value-added tests, again, please feel free to reach out to me. So we're going to get right into our examples here. So our first example is going to be a rotary screw compressor. And as you can see, this is an 8,000 hour oil. So what's the biggest concern we're seeing with this report? Well, if you look to the left, you'll see that there's about 16,000 hours on this oil. And that's where we're seeing the high viscosity, the high oxidation, and the acid number. So there's lots of things that could be going on. We could have the equipment running way longer than it needs to be. Perhaps the wrong oil was in there, a missed oil changed. Even maybe they tried mixing the oil. For any reasons uh, that listed above, we should really be investigating the root cause of what's going on. It's gonna have long-term detrimental effects on your compressor as well as the oil, as you can see. It could be something, like I mentioned, maybe an oil change was missed and we have these 16,000 hours. But why was the oil change missed? Could it be the equipment couldn't be shut down to production? Perhaps it was missed on the schedule or simply perhaps there was weather issues that caused it not, not being able to be changed. So solutions that you can do are regular maintenance intervals, and just making sure that everything is tracked to ensure that nothing is missed when it comes to oil changes. So the second example, again, we have an 8,000 hour oil, but we see that our oil is quite severely degraded after about 6,000 hours. So what could be going on here again? So, well, first of all, we do know that this is a 75 horsepower uh, machine so perhaps the machine had been overworked maybe we had too small of a compressor or perhaps something as simple as maybe the entire system isn't being regularly regularly inspected uh, air traps and pipes should should regularly be checked on the compressor to ensure there's no leakage uh, if you're getting leakage you're gonna result in the compressor working harder therefore the lubricants gonna have to provide that much more energies and we're going to have our oil our oil degra de degrade 
excuse me, degrading faster. We could um, resolve this issue by checking for leaks more often, or maybe we could change to a more suitable 4,000 hour oil, or even if we're making sure that our oil changes are regularly scheduled. So for this third example, this is a food grade oil, and we see that as a 2,000 hour drain. So the problem here is it's heavily oxidized oil at 4,000 hours, shown by the test and acid number. So what could have happened for the first two, or pardon me, the bottom two there where you see close to 5,000 and close to 3,800 hours, perhaps the oil changes were missed, or perhaps they were running an incorrect oil. Once you get down closer to the 2000 hour service, you can see that the oil is significantly improved in its uh, sample results. So what could have been done? Maybe they figured out that they were overworking their oil and they started to have proper maintenance schedules put in. They could have optimized the system to reduce the load on the compressor. Perhaps there's more stringent maintenance practices going on or something even as a having a third party service their compressors but as you definitely see that you need to be very focused on making sure that you're not overworking your oil you could see these high viscosity and these high water and oxidization and, and acid numbers as well it's really important to make sure that you're using your oil for what it was designed for So now we're going to talk about reciprocating compressors. So in this first one, we see that we have high silicon and high aluminum. Right away, we look at that results and we see that it's flagged. You can see consistently that the other, all the other samples were regularly good, no, no issues. And then we look at the physical tests, the viscosity, the acid number, um, the water, all that is looking how it should. So we, we can confidently say with this result that it is contaminated with dirt. You just see this one sample with that ratio of silicon to aluminum. Now this dirt ratio is typically three to, one, three to one and even up to nine to one, depending on the geography of the area. So the question that comes up is, so where did that dirt possibly come from? Perhaps poor sampling procedures? Maybe there's parts of the compressor that are open to the atmosphere. If there is no filtration of the incoming oil, all that would make a big difference. So this is an opportunity where you can reach out to us and see how we can help you with this. Perhaps we can help you with an, an oil analysis audit, um, perhaps um, provide you with uh, proper sampling procedures or even sample fittings, anything like that can come from this. So with this one, it's an interesting one. We see that there's no issues, no issues, and all of a sudden we see 104 silica, uh, ppm of silica, and then it goes back down to uh, lower, lower numbers. So in this case, it's most likely dirt, but silicon can also come from sealant or other oil additives. In this case, we see the 104, so that it, it immediately wants you to immediately begs the question, sorry, that should we be resampling this? And my recommendation would be to that to do that. But this, this high silicon can come from in many different places. There's many different places you can sample. You can sample from the fill cap here. And if you open that, you could be introducing contaminants. Uh, you could be sampling off the, the uh, filter inlet here. Or even on the one of the, even on one of the drain plugs here would really be a big difference. So uh, when I say other oil additives, perhaps even the packing oil has uh, leaked into the into the uh, compressor's oil. So that would also um, flag an, an indication that there is um, another issue going on. So if we think it's sealants, we could we could um, look back at the maintenance practices. So if a piece of equipment is opened and then they use a silicon sealant to uh, 
reseal the piece of equipment after and put the cap back on, silicon can easily get into your oil that way as well. And so for the next example with our natural gas reciprocating compressors, we see that we have high iron, high tin, high chromium, Vis viscosity is dropped off and our ISO particle count is way up. So it's most likely coming from compressor components, iron, tin, chromium, all components within a compress reciprocating compressor. So likely what's going on in this kind of case is we see that there's no, no um, indication here for water. Now what would happen is there's likely dissolved gas in this oil, oil sample. So it's not safe nor is it correct practices to be giving you a viscosity number based upon 100 degrees Celsius if dissolved gases are in there. So that test will not be done for that reason. So now we look at the 40 degrees Celsius and we see that we're way down to 131 centistokes where we should be closer to that 146, 150 range. Now, likely what's happening is that viscosity is thinning out and we're getting more into a boundary lubrication regime. So when I say that, it means that the lubricant film that separates the surfaces has depleted and now it's gonna be metal on metal wear and that's gonna be causing the components to wear apart. And over time, this is gonna be um, an issue. What'll happen is you'll start getting compression issues. You won't be getting the efficiency from your uh, equipment. And long-term, it's gonna start making your equipment run harder. So it's kind of a slippery slope. So making sure that that piece of equipment is running how it should be is gonna be very beneficial to you. Furthermore, we could see that the ISO count is up. So that's also indicating to us that it's steadily getting worse. The higher the ISO number, that lets us know that we're getting into more issues of more particles in the, in the oil. And that's gonna, again, lead to more concerns. So how can fluid life help you? So if we talked about the different different ways we are able to test oil or look look at oil samples but if you want a little bit more you can start upgrading your your test packages if you need if you're more concerned with having ISO particle count that's an upgrade to certain tests you can add additional alucard testing and we can we can discuss that um, furthermore if if you need some more um, information on that please reach out to us um, we have more private training available. If you need some assistance using our MyLab platform, that's a, a training that's available. Learning more about data interpretation, there will be a series of other webinars coming up. So hopefully we can help you with some data interpretation with that. But if you want a full on course on how to do that, that is a possibility. As a, well as we have the ICML, MLT, MLA, which is the Machinery Lubrication Technician or Machinery Lubrication Analyst uh, certification course available. And we have reliability services such as benchmarking on it. And when I say benchmarking, I mean sending a scorecard and saying, this is where my equipment is, or oil analysis audits. We talk about how we can improve your lubrication programs. Um, greasing is always a big issue. We can talk about how we can improve your greasing programs, your oil sampling projects, optimization improvements, oil drain extensions, and, and flaking optimizations, advanced analysis. If you're looking for something like a, a root cause analysis, or liability center maintenance, preventative maintenance optimization, these are all services that our great reliability group can provide to you. So if there's any questions, please feel free to contact, contact us at this contact information below. My name is Drew McRae, and if you need to reach out to me directly, my email is drew.mccray at fluidlife.com, and I would be more than happy to help you. Thank you for taking the time today to tune into this webinar. Have a great day.